When we want to know how much energy, minerals or vitamins we can find in a certain food, we need to check it in a food composition table or database. But have you ever thought about how a food composition table or database is created? I can tell you that it's very likely that you don't know the right answer. At least this is what happened to me in the past, before I started working with food composition. My name is Fernanda Grande and I have created this channel to share some knowledge and experience in food composition with you. And in this video I will tell you how food composition tables are created. So let's start! working with food composition, I was used to think that all food composition tables and databases were created as what we call an ideal food composition table. And this was because in my mind all values presented in a food composition database were a result of analysis carried out specifically for the database generation. So, I was considering that the foods were sampled in, a, in the given country and analyzed it to create the database. And also, for this ideal food composition database, the foods should be collected based on a national sampling plan, analyzed through appropriate analytical methods carried out under quality assurance process, and analyze all foods consumed by the given population. And this is really what we call an ideal food composition table. But it would be extremely expensive to create such a food composition database. Some estimates say that the cost for analyzing one food sample are between 1,000 and 1,500 US dollars, depending, of course, on the components that are analyzed and also on the laboratory. So, can you imagine how a food composition table can present the composition of thousand foods that are consumed by a population using only this ideal method? So, generating the ideal food composition database is very costly and therefore difficult for most of countries, even though this information is of high importance. And if you are not aware of it, I strongly recommend that you watch this video that we have here in the channel. But if it's not feasible for most countries to publish the ideal food composition database, we can go back to our initial question. How are they created? Well, as a professional that works developing food composition databases, we are also called food composition compilers. I can tell you that creating a food composition database is very close to putting together a puzzle. We need to take all sources of data available, of course, following some standards or end quality criteria to publish good food composition databases. So usually food composition databases are created using different types of data, including the direct analysis, which is the data generated using the criteria previously mentioned when I showed the ideal food composition table, where the values are generated for inclusion in the food composition database. But there are also other types of data. We can have data compiled from the scientific literature or unpublished reports from laboratories. They are usually of sound analytical quality. The compiler needs to scrutinize the data and the ones that are considered as good quality can be used in, in the compilation of the food composition table or database. In addition to these two types of analytical values, we can also have calculated, imputed, presumed or borrowed values. And let me briefly explain each of these. So calculated data or recipe calculations are used for cooked foods or mixed dishes. In this case, the nutrient values are calculated based on the nutrient contents of the ingredients and corrected for preparation factors, such as losses or gains of weight, usually referred to as yield factors, and micronutrient chains, which should be corrected by applying nutrient retention factors. And if you want to know more about recipe calculations, I recommend you to watch 
this video also available in this channel. Imputed values are estimates derived from analytical values obtained for a similar food. So, for example, if the calcium content is missing for white beans, we can impute the analytical value available for black beans. Or if we have the complete nutrient profile for a dried food but not for the fresh version, we can impute the value adjusting for the moisture content. We also have presumed data and these are values that can be assumed as being zero according to the current general knowledge. So, for example, we can say that for plant foods there are no cholesterol in their composition, so we can assume as zero. And lastly, we have the borrowed values, that are values taken from other food composition tables and databases, where reference to the original source may or may not be available. In some cases, the borrowed values should also be adapted to different water or fat contents, depending on the food component and the food that we are borrowing data from. So, due to the range of approaches that can be used to create a food composition table or database, they should come with a very complete and detailed data documentation, so the users can judge if the information presented in the database fits to their purpose. And also, thinking about the food composition data compilers that are who develop the food composition databases, it is extremely important that they have the experience and expertise required to manage the data available in a correct way by applying international standards, guidelines and tools during this process. And this is what we will talk about in the next videos. So, this is how food composition tables and databases are created. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you are interested in learning about food composition, you can find more information on my website, Food Composition Explained, and please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. And if you have any questions or topics that you would like me to cover, write them here in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.